Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We will begin in just a few moments. We're just going to give it another 30 seconds or so and see everyone uh, getting in to the program and then we will begin today's webinar. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar is available for CFE credits. If you're attending today's webinar for CFE credits, we want to welcome you to this afternoon's call. If you're not currently an IFPG member, we'd also like to invite you for a free tour of our site and all the features that we offer. We routinely offer many of our ongoing, uh, ongoing members educational sessions just like this. If you are interested or have any questions, please follow up with Mary Ann Paris, who is our membership director, at email address maryann, M-A-R-Y-A-N-N, -N, at ifpg.org for more information. Today's webinar, we have Eli Robinson of Franchise Help for the topic of Manage Webinars for Franchise Internet Leads. Tell me everything you know about internet advertising. Eli, if you are set, so are we. All righty. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I, as mentioned, my name is Eli. I'm the uh, general manager over here at Franchise Help. And today we're going to be talking, uh, I mean, everything is a lot, but uh, talking about everything that I and we over here at Franchise Help know about Internet advertising. Um, I think that ultimately this is a topic that, um, you know, we are on the forefront of given that we are um, – spending a whole lot of time of, of, of our day, every day, working on kind of drumming up interest in franchising using the web. Um, as time goes on, we happen to know that this only becomes, a, we, we believe, will become more and more a part of franchises' uh, marketing plans. And so uh, I'm glad everybody can join me and, and uh, for a little bit of a, a walk through what we see in all the different types of advertising and how they work and the pros and the cons and, and uh, whatever else we may find ourselves getting into. I will say, and uh, I've done a few of these webinars before, but uh, I, I never kind of find a way to make good on this, but I certainly would love it if, if there's anyone uh, that has any questions as the webinar is going through. Um, we certainly will take uh, have time for questions at the end, but I, you know, if, if, if we're on a topic and there's a question you have, please uh, type it in, and I will do everything I can. I think it gets related to me, and then I'll do everything I can to answer it in real time. Uh, there's no certainly no such thing as, as, as a dumb question when, when it comes to a, a topic as complicated as internet advertising. Uh, I'll try to leave a little time at the end so that, that we can uh, uh, take any questions, have any conversations you want to have, and I have my contact information there as well. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Maybe. Hold on. All righty. So a, uh, a brief introduction about who I am. I originally was an accounting and legal studies major uh, from Wharton. I, I used to be a, a management consultant. I was working for the man uh, and then and now kind of wandered my way into the tech space and, and, and uh, originally in marketing here at Franchise Help, but, but I'm now uh, the general manager kind of in charge of things. So I have 
seen a, a whole lot from uh, not only the franchise legion space, but in general um, the business world. And, and so hopefully uh, when I walk you through this, I'm going to come at it from a lens not only just completely uh, understanding what's going on in franchise legion, obviously that's important, but also trying to understand what the context a lot of what I'm talking about um, in the in the broader business world, uh, one of the interesting things about internet advertising is that you're actually competing against everybody in the world that wants to buy advertising, as opposed to just other franchises. But we'll we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. Uh, as far as what this webinar is, so we signed on to do a series of four webinars. So this is actually our second one um, in December. Uh, the first one was all about just kind of how to find new franchises using the internet and kind of keys that uh, coming later would be a deep dive into three of the four major steps that we uh, that we look at. I'll have a slide in a second, but this is, this is uh, uh, step number, or sorry, webinar number two, and we're going to focus on the highest level um, of what, you know, how, how we think lead generation starts, and then in webinars to come in a few months, we will talk about kind of how to actually move down the funnel from just the advertising into kind of how you turn someone into a lead and ultimately into a franchisee. Um, as far as today, I, I, I believe that webinar is available somewhere. It certainly was recorded. Um, sorry, today we're going to try to keep uh, the topic focused on um, on internet advertising and, and kind of the highest order uh, of what we're talking about here. Uh, a brief note, and um, you know, I, I include this in almost all the webinars I do because I think it's hopefully the most useful thing that I can share. Um, just over, just about a year and a half ago, uh, Franchise Health and I basically started writing a blog that we call the Lead Generation Resource Center at the LGRC, if, if I use the abbreviation. And ultimately, uh, what we were hoping to do and what we have done over the course of the last year and a half is really to talk about how lead generation is actually done. I think a lot of the time, um, especially as we look at the industry as a whole, it sometimes can seem like a black box. And it can seem like, okay, I put money into this thing and then leads come out. Uh, ultimately, you know, lead generation is something that everybody is doing all the time. And especially as the internet is concerned, it, it only gets more complicated and it's very sophisticated how it's done well. So um, we've written a series of articles recently, uh, I believe I uh, probably yeah, getting emailed out as we speak, um, talking about uh, the role of text messaging in lead follow-up. So it does give you an idea of some of the other things that we write about. But a whole lot of different topics that you can find to help your franchise out. Um, you know, you're, even if you work with lead generators or lead services or whatever, maybe you are doing lead generation one way or the other for your franchise. So uh, definitely check it out. The URL is at the bottom of every single slide, uh, franchisehelp.com slash franchise dash lead dash generation. Um, and hopefully you can uh, take a look around everywhere around the site. There's places to comment, ask questions, whatever it may be. We love having conversations with all the franchisors out there, so we're more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, I referred to it a, a second ago, but ultimately in, in kind of digging into how we think about franchise lead generation here at Franchise Health, we look at it at four different steps. And if you have heard a webinar that I've given before, you've probably uh, this will, will certainly be review, but ultimately, um, you know, every franchisee goes through one of four steps, and, and it's not only online, offline. However, you are finding franchisees, and in general, um, they're going to follow these four uh, steps. So, number one, and what we're going to be focusing on today is uh, what we call acquiring traffic. So, at, at the top of the funnel, how are we actually going to get people interested? In, um, in what we're doing, you know, how do we find them? Oftentimes, uh, we think of it as advertising, right? How, how do we attract their eyeball, attract their attention, attract their time? Um, step two, turning visitors into leads, we generally look at it as like, okay, how do we actually move them from advertisement to, to, to um, expressing their intent to either learn more or open a franchise or whatever it may be? On the web, this generally is the on-site experience. Um, most of the time, we talk about filling out contact forms, and, and if you uh, tune in in April, I'm sure we will hear far too much about contact forms, but kind of how do you go from an advertisement to ultimately bringing somebody to a website and filling out a contact form. Um, step three is how do we actually communicate with the leads? So once someone fills out the contact form, how do we actually get them to um, engage with the franchise? Um, as I mentioned, the article that we recently did a whole big study about text messaging, uh, that would fall into that bucket. Kind of how, how do you communicate with someone once you have their contact information? How do people want to be communicated with? How frequently? 
Um, email falls into that bucket, certainly. And then step four, uh, clearly the step that, that everybody on this phone call likely knows about far more than we do, uh, is actually turning candidates into franchisees. So once you start the conversation, continue the conversation, how do we actually get them across, across the goal line uh, via things like discovery days and, and giving them the FTD and communicating with them, actually selling them on the concept. Um, as I mentioned, um, we will be talking about number two and three in, in, in a webinar later, uh, later in the year, but today we're going to focus almost exclusively on number one. So how do you drive cost-effective, high-intent web traffic to your website? And uh, uh, in other words, the question that we are asked most frequently um, when people are talking about or asking about what we do here at Franchise Health uh, where do you guys find all the leads? Um, I think that the black box nature, as I described uh, recently or described earlier about the way people think about it, this is the major question, right? Um, we generate thousands and thousands and thousands of leads a month. Um, we work with hundreds and hundreds of franchises to, to help do that. And, and ultimately, uh, it, you know, for some people, it, it's very difficult to understand. Like, how, how do you find all these leads? Um, and, it, and it's a good question. Um, ultimately, and, and much to some people's dismay, it's not much of a secret. Um, we don't really have uh, anything around here that, that would not be accessible to everyone. Um, I think our expertise is, is certainly what we, we hold near and dear, what we believe gives us a competitive advantage over uh, other lead generators that may be out there. But, but ultimately, uh, where we find the leads every single place is completely accessible to your franchise as well. So as you guys think about your um, internet advertising budget and actually driving traffic to your website, um, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. All righty. Uh, all, only because I'm trying to stay in good habits. Uh, is there any, any questions so far? My chat box has not uh, opened up or has not, nobody says, I guess it's just an overview so far. So, all right. If there's any questions, please stop it. All right, so, so um, it's difficult to summarize internet advertising. Um, the, the space is so um, fragmented and fractured and it evolves so fast that it's nearly impossible to, in a single slide or in a single effort, um, show, okay, here is internet advertising. Um, one, someone once showed me a picture of what the landscape of all the players internet advertising looked like, and there were probably a thousand different companies that were mentioned. So I um, don't promise that this table that you see here is, um, is a great table, but as far as the conversation that we're going to have today, I try to distill internet advertising into six different types. Um, you probably have heard of some of these. You maybe have heard of all of them. Hopefully you've heard of at least one or two. Uh, and we're going to kind of, after this slide, kind of go one by one and, and talk about each one. But in general, um, these are the six. Um, the ones you've probably, you've almost certainly heard of, search engine marketing, SEM. So when you search for something on the internet as ubiquitous as a search engine like Google may be, and perhaps Bing or, or something else, um, there are advertisements all over the results page. That's generally what we think about when we think about search engine marketing. Um, there's search engine optimization, which is not about the paid results when you're in um, a search engine, but rather the organic results. So um, if you were to Google what is the best franchise, it would be very interesting to see who is actually there. Um, the other one you've, all, you know, you've almost certainly heard is actually the fourth one, which is social media. Sometimes we just abbreviate it social. Um, Facebook is certainly the world leader in social media advertising. Twitter is there. Uh, you know, I could list so many different uh, social media networks here. Uh, one of the personal ones and one of the ones that is certainly up and coming is Reddit. Um, if you guys are familiar with that, we have a post on, on the LGRC about kind of how franchisors may elect to use Reddit, and it's certainly a place for advertising as well. Um, display advertising is certainly one of the, 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 it's more on its way out, but um, thinking, you know, appearing as a clickable banner, uh, you know, you, you see these, these squares and these, these banners that have been all over the internet for, for now decades, uh, very, still certainly a prominent piece. Uh, content marketing, going back up to what was there, number three, is, is more about education and um, presenting content that ultimately will um, influence someone's behavior. And then affiliate marketing, 
um, actually just paying someone, uh, generally another website, to send traffic to your site, which we will talk about there. Uh, I'm assuming this is all too high level for y'all, but uh, this is kind of is the slide how we're gonna we're gonna talk about each one. Um, before um, before I dig into each one, and, and this was actually the last slide that I added to the presentation. I, I just there were some things that were on my mind that I realized that weren't going to be noted anywhere else. So uh, just some things to keep in mind as we think how go through these things. So number one, kind of who is the audience? So who uses this platform? Who uses Facebook? Who uses Google? Um, for those, you're going to find that the answer is more everyone. Um, but a uh, website like Reddit, some, a certain amount of people may use. If you want to buy advertising in the Wall Street Journal, there's a certain um, the audience that's going to use that. Uh, second tier on audience is kind of what targeting am I using? So a lot of the innovation that is occurring in online advertising right now is all about targeting. So right now, if you wanted to find um, on Facebook, um, you know, 28 year old women from Knoxville, Tennessee that like sewing and who um, have purchased something on the internet in the last three weeks, you could do that. And they could tell you exactly who those people are and how many they are. And so for as complicated as the ad development you guys actually have, the targeting is, is equally as complicated. And I don't have a lot in here. I, don't have anything visually about targeting, but certainly something to keep in mind is, is exactly you know who are you looking for? Who is your franchise looking for? Because um, the answer to that question is very much going to drive what type of advertising you should think about. Um, probably most importantly, and, and we're not going to focus on it today, but where's the click being sent? If, if it is something where you're going to actually redirect somebody, um, we'll talk about that in April. But at nearly is probably more important than the internet advertising is kind of what is the experience for the person after they, they actually click on the ad. Um, what is the CTA? What is the call to action? And, and then what does the website say and look like? Well, what are we doing? Um, too many franchise websites these days, when you click an ad, you are just smacked in the face with a contact form. And, and it's kind of a weird experience. And, and a lot of people probably don't understand why their websites don't do better. And uh, a lot of times it's like, well, you know, since when did any of us click an ad for a lot of contact forms? Not something that people do very much anymore. So uh, thinking about where the click is actually being sent. Uh, another one that people forget that affects internet advertising is the mobile versus desktop experience. I mean, you guys have, have likely read and heard a whole lot about this, but the vast majority of, of, of traffic these days is, is mobile and it's only becoming mobile more frequently. Uh, so if your internet advertising strategy is based on someone sitting at their desktop computer while they're at their office at 3 p.m., uh, you are becoming, your strategy is becoming staler by the minute. Um, we think very much here at Franchise Help about the person who's on the couch at 9 p.m. on their iPad, right? That's more uh, representative of the way that people are thinking and using the internet um, these days than the desktop experience. So you've got to have to have an internet advertising plan that, that reflects that. And then the last thing that I just want to mention is that we kind of look at internet advertising in, in two different types. Um, so a lot of what we do is testing. We, we just we do all sorts of different trials. Let's try this platform. Let's try this targeting. Let's try this ad. Let's try this flow. Um, and a lot of things that we do are slow. Are, I know this is going to work. So uh, an example of a slam dunk may be um, buying branded keywords on uh, on Google. So when you're you're going to buy the search term that is your actual brand, which is something that everybody on this call will almost certainly be doing, um, that's not a test. That's just something you do. You should do it. They're very inexpensive, and they guarantee that people end up where you want them to end up. Um, something like a test would be um, running some Twitter. Um, targeting, you know, some sort of uh, study you guys ran about how much money you could make running a franchise. That's probably something that's a little bit more tech. But as you guys, uh, the, the questions that I think you should be asking yourself about your internet advertising plan as it sits here today are not only what we're going to talk about going through each of the platforms, but also what you see here, um, which is, you know, these questions. Who's the audience? Where's the clicking sense? When, when you have good answers to these questions, you really start to have a good strategy that everybody can get behind from an internet advertising perspective. All righty, another call for questions. My, my, uh, my chat box hasn't, hasn't opened up yet, so I, it doesn't, doesn't look like there are any, but 
Uh, Nothing yet, Eli. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's get in. Let's get in and start going one by one down these things. Um, so I, in, in in webinars past, I have included big tables with all sorts of information in them, and, and I've got some feedback from some coworkers that people don't like reading um, encyclopedias on, on slides. So I've done my best to make the slides a little bit more visual for you guys, so that you can kind of understand what I'm talking about, and, and kind of I'll talk over what you see. So the first thing we want to talk about is search engine marketing, and you know everybody here uses a search engine. Uh, probably use it on your desktop, on your phone, your whole life. Type in, you know, where you want to go travel, where you want to go eat, learning about the process for nominating a Supreme Court justice, whatever it may be. You're searching tens of hundreds of things uh, all the time. Uh, and just to get people familiar, on the left-hand side of the slide, you see, okay, this is actually what Google search engine results page looks like right now. Um, if you were to, I think this is, if you were to search for open a franchise. I believe is, is the search that you or open a business perhaps um, or open a franchise. You see on the left, like the first three results on the search engine results page are ads, and Google is very clear to to pull out that these are ads that someone is buying um, that, that is to get in front of you. As you see, you don't get until the fourth thing that is something that is actually organic, and most of you realize that uh, the ability to be the thing that shows when somebody searches is very powerful. Um, it is what has turned Google into the most valuable company in the world. Uh, this is available to you guys. Um, as you see on the right-hand side of the page, although it's not particularly informational, I kind of wanted to give you an idea of what the, what the tools actually look like. That is what the back end, um, that is what Google's advertising system actually looks like. So if you can zoom in and see some of the tabs, you see settings, you see ads, you see ad extensions, dimensions, display network, um, what things you can automate, what you can filter, how to create new ads. Um, you see there, you know, a little lens into franchise helps back end. You see four ads that we have here. Uh, one ad reads franchise are expanding near you. The next ad reads new opportunities start with you. Next ad reads new opportunities available today. So, so um, a very complicated and complex system which gets translated into a very simple system uh, on the left. And so when you're thinking about to what extent search engine marketing is going to work for your brand, I think there are a couple things to keep in mind. One, you should almost certainly be buying keywords for your actual brand name. Whatever your franchise is, buy that keyword. Um, as you, you're gonna, you, you know, your, your comeback to me is gonna be that, oh, but we're already the number one organic search. That's true, but why not take up more of the results page? God forbid people don't end up on your website when they're actually searching for you. Um, branded keywords is what we call that. So you're actually going to buy the search term for your franchise are very inexpensive. They're generally more in the penny or nickels per click. Um, you know, clicks can be as high as fifty dollars, not in the franchise space, but they can be in other uh, contexts. So um, you know, definitely think about buying those kinds of keywords. But you can buy anything you want. Um, and, and Google allows for all sorts of different matching criteria. So one of the things that we write about a lot is this concept of franchise phrase match. So you can buy search terms for the term fra franchise, and if you elect to buy it under something called phrase match, you can actually show up for every single time anybody searches something for uh, the word franchise. So if someone searches Star Wars movie franchise or most valuable NFL franchise, you would actually show up there as well. So obviously, I don't think anybody on this call would be interested in buying those keywords, but it's used to demonstrate the flexibility that you have. So you want to think about what your ad's actually going to read. As you see on the left, you don't have a lot of characters. Um, you got to really uh, think about what is going to draw someone in the most. Uh, Thousand Degrees Pizza, for example, as you see there on the left, actually has Thousand Degrees Pizza, and then they have it again. Um, so they're certainly using a lot of uh, a lot of characters to show their brand uh, for that. You need to think about the search term. It really comes down to that. So what is someone searching? If you are a fitness franchise and you're only in Florida, right? Uh, you can narrow your search down to fitness franchises for sale in Florida. You can even tell them, please don't send me anyone that's not currently located in Florida. Um, perhaps you want to include specific geographies that people search. So franchise for fitness franchises in, um, uh, in Jacksonville and Orlando, that's something you can search for. And you can have the ads actually work that way. Uh, 
you can, uh, if you don't like the term fitness, you can also buy gym, um, you can buy workout, you can buy whatever you'd like. So search engine marketing is incredibly variable. Um, there's no definite strategy that's going to work for anyone, uh, but it really is an important tool as you think about um, your brand and, and what you actually want to show up for um, when someone is searching. Uh, if you want to include things like franchises to open, best franchises for sale, right franchise for me, you can even include those just thinking about um, what somebody would be searching in. So uh, you guys are familiar with search engine marketing. Uh, you know, we certainly can, if you, if you have more questions about it as we follow up, uh, Franchise Health certainly spends lots and lots of money every month on, on search engine marketing, people searching for things like open a business, franchise ideas, um, whatever it may be. Okay, uh, as a foil to search engine marketing, search engine marketing being defined as someone paying to show up as a certain result, is search engine optimization. Uh, you guys probably heard the letters SEO next to each other. Um, you, you have almost certainly received emails to your inbox, let us help you with your SEO. Um, it seems like a lot of people out there, uh, SEO is like a fear-mongering term. Oh my gosh, we don't have good SEO. We need more SEO. Um, and, and it's kind of becomes this buzzword in the internet marketing, uh, the internet marketing world. Uh, just so we're all on the same page, although most of you probably understand it, on the left-hand side of the page, you see um, a, a, the kind of the bottom of, you know, underneath the ads, what the search engine result um, pages, page would look like. And the search that I did, is, as it says on the right, is best franchises to own. So theoretically, every single franchise out there would love to be the number one result when you search best franchises to own. As you guys take a look at the left-hand side of the page, you probably notice there is not a single franchise that is located here. Uh, you have Forbes, you have The Street, you have entrepreneur. And so, uh, you know, ultimately what Google has determined is that for that search, best franchises to own is a better idea to give people uh, information from these sources and, and these actual articles. Uh, it's, uh, as you think about it and put yourself in the searcher's shoes, we, we all want to be at the top of the list, uh, it, pr it probably makes a lot of sense. Right? I, I don't want to hear about this very specific tax preparation franchise if I search best franchise to own. Oh, wait a second, Forbes has an interactive on the best worst franchise to buy. That's actually more what I was going for. Um, so, you know, what is SEO? SEO, as we think about it around here, is generating relevant content that has the ability to be indexed by Google for a variety of different searches. Uh, SEO is not something you do. SEO is not something you do better. Uh, SEO is not something that you have. Um, every single one of your franchises, just by having a website, is participating in search engine optimization because Google is indexing that page. And if you were to Google the name of your franchise, you would show up almost certainly as number one. Um, <laughs> I, I put my point about SEO on the right. Um, no one except for high-level Google employees, and when I say high-level, these are people who are probably making more money than everybody on this call combined, knows exactly what makes a page rank on specific keywords. There are people out there that spend tons and tons of, of time trying to back out how search engine optimization works, why something's here. There, no one actually knows except for Google employees. And that's very important. If someone tells you that they can help your SEO, they probably they may be able to, but if they tell you we know SEO, we know how it works, it, it's not true. Um, it, it's, it's a lot more about don'ts than do's. So when you are thinking about SEO, a lot of people are, you know, oh, what do I actually do? Because a lot of people don't do certain things. Um, you know, don't uh, non-index your pages, don't buy bad links, from other, um, from, from, from kind of shady websites. Don't um, name your pages weird things. If you create a web page that is helpful and valuable to people that come to read it, 
your search engine ranking will go up over time. Now, as far as focusing on SEO uniquely, um, when somebody says, okay, I want to work on SEO, we generally think about that, about generating new content um, that is going to rank for something. So um, let's go back to the idea if you own a fitness franchise. Uh, perhaps you have a particularly successful franchisee. So you want to create a case study online about what it's like to be a fitness franchisee. And perhaps you title it the life of a franchisee or something like that. Um, go create it, interview that person, create a wonderful piece of content with great images and, 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 and a very fun thing for people to be a part of. Over time, if you have done a good job creating that content, you will begin to rank for things like what's it like to be a franchisee, uh, fitness franchisee, uh, et cetera. I'm a particularly, I'm fairly bearish on SEO in general. I'm sure some of you out there are much uh, focused on it a lot more. Uh, I just know that it is a bit of a black box. So when you think about doing SEO, uh, I just want people to know that it's more of something that falls in the wake of another strategy as opposed to a strategy in and of itself. All righty. Uh, number three, which is, uh, I guess we'll do it in order that we're in the table, content marketing. So for those of you who have followed the evolution of online uh, advertising as we've, uh, as things have gone on, this one is newer. Um, and, and in general, I'm going to talk about content marketing as um, rather than, uh, oftentimes you'll hear it as um, uh, direct response as more of the marketing we've talked about before, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. Direct response marketing is this idea of, okay, I'm gonna buy an ad, I'm gonna take that click, I'm gonna take that click, and I want someone to take an action at whatever page they get to next. Uh, content marketing is about getting people to engage in a story um, as a form of interacting with your brand. So um, on this page, I kind of have the two leaders in a very different way in content marketing that's out there. So let's talk, uh, I'm assuming most people on this call have a LinkedIn page, and if you ever looked at the homepage, um, you can see that content marketing is kind of rife with LinkedIn, or sorry, LinkedIn is rife with content marketing. So you see a couple examples here. So one there is from Travelers. I stole this from my actual, um, my actual LinkedIn page. So it says, does your company have the right cyber coverage? Um, that ad, if it was direct response, would read something more along the lines of, Hi, by cyber coverage, by cybersecurity solutions from travelers. But content marketing dictates, hey, I actually want to help people. I want to provide something valuable. And if you were to have clicked on that article, you would have been taken to something which is helping people think about um, uh, content marketing or, or about cyber coverage for their company. Uh, intrinsically, it's associated with travelers, but um, it's not directly about that. It's about getting somebody to engage in a story. Uh, and below there, you see something from Spiceworks, which is what will IT pros buy in 2016, which is they're doing a report, they're doing a study about what are the trends in the industry, and they're providing it for you. Um, and you will go read on Spiceworks.com the results of the study, and ideally, uh, you're kind of going to associate um, a lot with that. Uh, content marketing, as I mentioned uh, earlier, is very much intrinsically linked to SEO. You don't have to buy an ad around content marketing. Uh, if you produce a good piece of content for the life of a franchisee, for example, um, that piece of content lives on your website and, and can be engaged with all sorts of different ways. You can send traffic to it. You can have it indexed by SEO. Uh, you can you know, email it around, whatever you'd like. So content marketing is a lot about generating good content, and then what I have here it is a couple examples of how to get traffic to it. Um, the most popular content marketing that you see out there, and you guys probably, if you are users, avid users of the internet, see this all over the place, are these promoted stories. Basically, every news story or everything you ever read, it, when you get to the bottom or you look at the right rail, they have these really crazy recommendations about what you should read, and they always have like really cool titles and really clickbaity things. So a ranking of 2016 presidential candidates by wealth, the 19 politicians that smoke dope, uh, the guys who crack the code on shaving. Um, this is actually a company called Outbrain. There's a couple other ones, uh, Tabula, et cetera, that, that, that do this. And, and so these companies, Forbes, FullU, InsideGov, Harry, et cetera, um, come to Outbrain and say, hey, I have a piece of content that I want to send people to. And then Outbrain has a network and has relationships with all these publishers um, so you, you can get this. But this is actually an example of paid 
content advertising. Um, for those of you who were not aware that the, all these stories were paid and, and you clicked on them frequently, uh, I, I, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Uh, it, it, is, it is unbelievable how ripe um, you, you see uh, this stuff all around the internet. Although it seems like every day there's more and more of these, but that was an example of it. But, but, but back to you know content marketing as a whole, I, for me, when I think about it, it's like, look, it all starts with producing a story that a certain audience wants to read, right? If you're thinking about franchise development, the stories generally are about success stories of franchises, how easy it is, how affordable it is, how it changed their life, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because those are the types of stories, ultimately, that are going to resonate with people who may become franchises, and you want them to read it, you want them to think about it, um, and, and ultimately become that person. How you get them there, be it by email, but you know, yeah, whatever, is, is is less important, still important, but uh, uh, very very important to remember. You need to have the right story, the right person, the right images, the right flow. Um, you know, when you when you load a web page and you see crappy images, you're very quickly you're very likely to bounce out. Um, so you know, you a lot of people in the franchise industry are actually excellent at telling stories. Um, they're fantastic, so think about kind of what are the stories uh, that, that you want to tell about your franchise and, and then create amazing content around that. Social media marketing. All righty, number four, trucking through now. Um, social media marketing is, uh, you know, I'm, I have some, some Facebook things here because it, for those of you who follow um, kind of the market and, and what's actually, Facebook has absolutely exploded in the past year. and um, they have really cracked the code on advertising and really cracked the code on mobile advertising. And I'm assuming the vast majority of people on this call have a Facebook. And you probably realize that your news feed is incredibly intermingled with advertisements on Facebook. Facebook's kind of out of the right rail game. Um, they still have a right rail and you can buy ads over there, but it, it, they're not nearly as effective. And, you know, we see click-through rates on the right rail of a tenth of a percent, and we can sometimes see click-through rates in the news feed of two, three, four percent. It's amazing to think that four percent of people actually see an ad would click on it. But social media marketing is about injecting your product, in this case your franchise, in the middle of someone's life. Right? People are using social media to engage with products they like, to engage with people they like, to engage with groups they like, and you're going to find a way to be there at the right time. Um, once again, think through, and the experience I'm going to come back to over and over again is how many times you look at your news feed. For those of you who are Instagrammers out there, Instagram recently launched advertising, and if you've seen how someone uses Instagram, they scroll picture after picture after picture after picture, and then every once in a while, one of those photos is an advertisement. Um, what Facebook works to do, and the reason that social media marketing works so well, is that these social media networks are so engaging. People come back to them over and over and over again. People spend an, un, an ungodly amount of time on Facebook. So you have the ability to show up in their life, right, to be there as an option for them. Um, as you see this easy company, you know, I have on the left, it's Salesforce, right? Uh, I'm sitting there scrolling through my Facebook feed. It's like, oh, wait, what is what is the CRM? It's now the time to, whoa, okay, like I need to think about this. Like that was probably right next to a, a picture of, uh, my friend, you know, in Norway, and and next to, uh, you know, an announcement that one of my friends was getting engaged, was thinking about CRM, and, and the advertisements are all over the place. So, so for social media marketing, um, it's very much about kind of injecting your brand into that. And and when we think about what you need to think about there, it's about uh, what's in it for that person, right? If they're going to click out of their social media network, be it Twitter or Reddit, or Pinterest, or Facebook, um, why, why are you, you know, what are you selling that I'm going to be able to do that? So as you see Salesforce, who's a fantastic internet marketer, is your company ready for a CRM? Right? Like, and I guess they think that's a question that I'm going to ask myself. I ask myself that frequently, oddly enough. Uh, for those of you who are, want to use social media marketing to look for, um, to new, for new franchisees, uh, think about messaging. Are you ready for a change? Are you ready to take control of your life? Are you ready for financial freedom? If you always wanted to be your own boss, right? These are the types of things in social media marketing that resonate very well because you're getting, you're, you're starting to tap into that personal experience. And yes, I am. Oh my gosh, 
click through and, and, and see where we go. Um, one note on social media marketing that I think is very important is for the most part, social media marketing offers the most advanced targeting. So we talk um, about audiences towards the beginning of this. Really knowing what audience you want to attract will allow you to create advertisements that resonate a lot. So I don't know um, what it is about my Facebook profile that would tell Salesforce that I am a decision maker to who could um, institute a CRM at our company, but somehow Facebook knows that about me. Facebook knows that I'm, I'm in that position and Salesforce did a fantastic job targeting me as someone that could do this. Um, if you know that your franchise is almost always opened by um, women ages 45 to 54 who live in rural areas who have $75,000 or more in the bank, you can run that targeting and you can find exactly who those people are, um, especially geographically as we talked about if it's in Florida or the Midwest or the entire um, the entire country or a, a foreign country, whatever it may be, um, social media allows you to do that type of targeting. Uh, I know social media uh, marketing sounds attractive, uh, difficult to do well, and, and generally the, the, the downside to keep in mind is unlike search engine marketing, which is often kind of reported as the, the other big thing you can do, search engine marketing, someone is searching for something, right? Like they're out there looking for something, they, they want information, I'm going to Google to help me with this problem. For social media marketing, the brand is injecting itself into your life. That's the major difference. Is so to get someone interested in an advertisement, if you're going to go down the social media marketing route, you have to be better because you're going to require someone to get distracted from something they were already do, already doing, as opposed to capturing interest and intent that they already declared to Google. Um, and, and so uh, it is a very powerful, new, fairly new way to build out internet advertising, but uh, also very difficult because of what you are attempting to do. On the right-hand side, I, I know I didn't, uh, didn't talk about it a lot at all, but you can see an example of kind of what the back end of, uh, of Facebook looks like. This is an ad that we run uh, at, looks like it's named Personality 3. Uh, you know, it's very similar complexity, if you would, to, to search engine marketing. And, and a lot of times it's because this stuff's complicated and, 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 you know, they have so many choices and options for you uh, that they want to, to, to put at your disposal. All righty, the last two, uh, and, and then definitely can recap, and then uh, would, would really appreciate if anybody has any questions. So on the left, you see display ads, and, and I, I definitely want to um, pay heed to display ads because they are still all over the web, and although they are um, not growing and not advancing at the type of rate that uh, they probably used to, uh, the inventory is still all over the place. Um, you can serve thousands and thousands and thousands of display advertisements for a fairly economical amount of money. And, uh, you know, if, if what you're trying to do is build brand awareness, get your name out there, and have people, you know, have heard of you, I mean, display advertising is, is generally very affordable and a way to do that. The one thing that I see on display advertising that franchises seem to mess up more than, um, than, than some of the other companies that are participating Finding good display ads, good imagery, good um, flow is very difficult to do. Um, the best companies that are doing it, so here you see um, Bombardier and NetJets uh, have this here. They generally hire very expensive design firms, and as you see, this is an incredibly sleek, incredibly visually appealing advertisement. Uh, if you can imagine if this was somewhere in the web, my eyes would be drawn to this. I want to see this. When you use creative that was from five years ago, when you um, make it yourself in Microsoft Paint or, uh, or Photoshop or whatever you may do, and it, 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 you are fighting a major uphill battle. People have ad blindness toward display advertisement anyway, just because it's been around so long and people know not to look at it. If your display ads are not top of the line, I would not expect them to be an effective place for you to spend your money. Um, take a look at the type of inventory that you have. Um, there are companies all over that are, would be more than happy to help you. They're generally fairly affordable. Uh, I don't, would, don't think I would recommend investing in a display advertising campaign, 
Um, the franchises who are likely going to do that are, are much bigger and are likely going to use display advertisement more for um, attracting people to actually visit their actual concept. So if you are a McDonald's, you're going to want to use display advertisement to get people into the store as opposed to open a McDonald's. However, um, I have no doubt that there are franchises out there for which display advertising is vital to how they do what they do, and um, I'm almost certain that their creative is, is excellent. Uh, last thing, uh, and uh, this, I use the e-commerce example, but I, I don't necessarily, uh, doesn't have to be, is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing can sometimes get a bad rap um, when you hear the term, because oftentimes people think about, oh my gosh, I'm paying uh, for this, and the affiliates can be a little sleazy, and they certainly can. There's a uh, fair share of affiliates um, out there. But as you see here, I, I stole this and I, and I wrote um, I, I wrote a couple articles about native advertising in the LGRC, but this is a blog I read uh, called deadspin.com. It's about sports, sports news. And uh, one of the articles that they have here is, oh, today's best deal. And there's some deals there. Um, and it's like, oh, cool. Like Maybe this is something that I'm interested in. You go and you click. And, and what happens is ultimately they're going to take me to this place where I can buy these Swiss gear bags or rainbow sticks or anchor chargers or whatever. And then once that, um, you know, once I click through uh, to, I must be Amazon. The situation is you can see there. Um, then, then the original publisher gets paid. Uh, a lot of the affiliate deals, which are relevant in the uh, franchising space, would be with publishers that write about uh, business. So um, you can sign a deal. A lot of people sign a deal with Entrepreneur.com, perhaps that you can get traffic sent there. Um, a lot of franchise blogs exist, franchisees who have blogs, and you say, oh, okay, like, can, uh, can you write an article about our franchise and we'll pay you for every click that comes through? Um, at the top, you'll see, uh, you know, I have Commission Junction on, in the table. Commission Junction is kind of a, a, a place where you could list your franchise um, as an affiliate, and then publishers could come and say, oh, like, I would love, I think my audience would be great. I'd love to send traffic to this franchise and you can kind of work out a deal with them how you would compensate them for that. Um, we certainly work with some affiliates, not much here at Franchise Health. Um, with, you know, we work with some email affiliates, so um, companies that send out useful email newsletters, and we want to be one of the places in that email newsletter for them to um, talk about. Uh, there's some affiliates that do uh, alerts, so something of, you know, oh, this, this is a new opportunity, sometimes it can be on your phone, sometimes it can be email as well. Um, Affiliate marketing is oftentimes about the relationship. So finding the right partner, cultivating that relationship as well as you possibly can, and then, and then having it work for you. And oftentimes there's more of the set it and forget it mentality where um, some of these things are a little bit more, you know, re require active engagement. Um, before I go to the end, I want to come back to these two slides because ultimately um, kind of sum up what we talked about here today. And, and obviously, if, if I did a good job. I'm imagining you have more questions than you have answers, and my response would be welcome to internet advertising. But um, this is the framework we look at here. There's all sorts of new advertisement and new advertising that uh, comes up all the time, and it, the answer is absolutely right. Uh, the people, you know, to be on the cutting edge of internet advertising, I mean, you're talking about testing new things all the time. Um, you know, there's not, you, you can imagine how many social networks there are. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to invest in Google, but what about Bing? What about Yahoo? Um, for SEO, as I mentioned, nobody actually knows how it works. So imagine how much time you've actually spent thinking about that. And like I said, probably not a day goes by that a company doesn't try to email you and help you with your SEO. I still haven't figured out what that actually means, but you know, perhaps they can. Uh, content marketing, think about the, the limits of how many stories there are to be told in, in different formats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we think of it this way. Uh, Probably goes without saying, but Franchise Health actually participates in all six of these. Um, we we uh, spend somewhere from hundreds to thousands, ten thousand, hundreds of thousands of dollars on all of them all the time. Um, we know that in order to succeed at the scale that we are doing internet advertising, we kind of have to be everywhere. Um, for most franchises, depending on how big you are, it's probably just one or two of these things. Probably trying them out, seeing if you can make it work. Um, you know, and, and, and ultimately, I, I'm confident that with the right um, advice and, and the right uh, expertise, you, you guys absolutely can. Um, the other thing I wanted to come back with these things that you know weren't necessarily there, but but don't forget these things. You know, audience matters. Where the click being sent matters. I mean, mobile, you'll you'll hear me harp on it over and over and over again. If, if people, if you design an ad for the desktop experience, um, you, you're behind. You're 
moving in the wrong direction. Uh, think about these things. Uh, experts like us in the franchise space are here. Um, internet advertising agencies are out there to help. Um, some companies are going to elect to completely outsource this stuff. Some companies are going to do it in-house. Uh, it's true that it is complicated, but especially in the way that I'm presenting it, it's because there are so many options. Uh, think about what's going to work for you guys. Focus on it. Work on it. Try things. Test email me, ask what I think about this, you know, and, and get all the advice you can and, and, and over time uh, I believe things are going to work out better than obviously a big believer in this stuff. Uh, so with that, uh, that is my very quick 30 minute overview of everything I know about internet advertising. Uh, I certainly appreciate you guys for um, for listening in. My email address you can see, I believe I spelled it correctly, yes, elifranchisehealth.com. Uh, certainly available to take any of your questions by email. Um, I, I implore you guys, I'm almost certain if you have a question, I've written about it on the LGRC, um, visit the Lead Gen Resource Center, uh, share it amongst your team, share it amongst your industry contacts. We have been so diligent in capturing the types of questions that people have and turning it into content that is relevant for people like you. So please, please check it out. Uh, but with that, uh, I'd be more than happy to take any questions uh, that almost certainly arose uh, during the presentation. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Eli. We appreciate it. At this time, if you have any questions, please type them into the question box. I'd also like to unmute you if you've used your audio pin and you can speak directly with Eli. And again, if there's anything you'd like to speak with him off air about, please use his contact information. That should be on your screen. Eli, I'm just waiting for some questions. We actually don't have any right here. I think it's because you were so thorough. <laughs> I, I've, I've confused everyone so much that they don't even know what to ask. <laughs> that, that can happen sometimes. may take a minute to sink in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> just another minute or two, everyone. We have a few people telling you that they're going to email you, and what a great job you did. <laughs> I, uh, I I hope so. I, I, uh, this stuff's obviously tough. You guys know it, and, and uh, appreciate you sticking with us. Not easy, to, not easy to get through all of it. We do have one question. Um, what do you typically pay affiliate marketing? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. So how much do we pay them, or what do we pay them? Is that generally what the question is? All right, so affiliate, 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 affiliate marketing. Yeah, yeah. So, essentially. Yeah, sure. So every affiliate deal that we strike is different. Um, my favorite affiliate deal to strike is what I call a cost per, cost per email deal. So um, obviously we don't sell email only leads here, but it's kind of a, um, a lot of affiliates are going to be hesitant to sign full cost per lead deals because lead deals mean that we need to capture someone's name, email address, zip code, and phone number. So what we'll do is email and we'll put up some sort of gate where um, the first thing that we'll ask someone for is for their email address and then we pay them. Uh, we pay on email addresses depending on the quality of it, anywhere between a dollar to five dollars. Um, we have a couple of full lead deals. They're not very big. Um, you know, like, and, and you know, we, we, I'm not a huge fan of them because I'd like to know where a lot more of my traffic is coming from. But uh, let's see, I mean, we've probably paid everywhere from 20 to $35, I would say, on those deals. Um, I don't think we have any affiliate deals right now that are CPC that are per click. But yeah, I would say on the email, we're generally a dollar to five dollars on the full lead, probably around 20 to 35. But it's all about negotiation. I mean, the, the there is no, um, there's absolutely no kind of rhyme or reason to, oh, this general affiliate relationship looks like this or that. Every single one is unique. Thank you. Eli, we have another question is, if you outsource, what's a typical monthly budget for marketing to, uh, to social media? For franchise health? Yes. All right. Well, so it so it ranges. 
Um, I would say on the low end, you know, when uh, we don't like it, it's probably I don't know in the in the tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, at when we're when we're at full cooking, and and that's where we're spending a lot of our time is probably more in the six digits plus range. I see, you know, for a comfort for an internet advertising company as complicated as franchise help, it's difficult to pinpoint our budget at any given time because we are spending so much and we're generating so much interest that we're kind of on. We have to be here and there. We have to be very agile. Um, you know, I hesitate to believe that a franchise would need to be in as many different piles of advertising as we are. Um, I would love to be able to take one type of advertising and focus on, focus on it exclusively. Unfortunately, um, we need to find thousands and thousands of people a month, so, so it causes um, a little bit more stress than that. But you can make a social media budget work on, I don't know, I would say if you could spend $1,000 a month you probably could make something work. I would say as you get closer to the multiple thousands of dollars a month, you could almost certainly make something work. But once you stay in the hundreds, uh, my fear is that you just wouldn't have enough scale uh, to, to like really see something work. If, if you had very specific targeting and you were only looking for a few types of people, perhaps you could do it with hundreds of dollars a month. Uh, it seems unlikely though. Thank you, Eli. We do have another question. Let me see if I can unmute this gentleman. Sure. Charles, are you there? Charles, I've unmuted you. I don't know if you're self-muted. That's all right. I have this question here. Um, question being, what is the most efficient way to create multiple franchisee websites without hindering CEO? Should each franchisee get their own domain name with the city added on. Is the answer subdomain? Oh man! I uh, so that. Oh, is he there? Let me see if oh. I can unmute him one more time. Charles, we have you. Unfortunately, it looks like Charles. It looks like you're self muted. Can you say something? I heard him. All righty. Well, I can I can start to answer his question. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, so we in April uh, a perfect a perfect segue. In April, we're going to talk a lot about how how to think about designing websites. Um, I would likely not have their own domain. Having their own domain likely um, likely is not the way to go. Subdomaining it sounds um, sounds like an option you could do. So if you were McDonald's, you know, Orlando.McDonald's.com or something like that, I would imagine it would be more of a sub URL. And to the extent that your website remains, like takes in creative control, which I don't know if you do or not, I would likely say, you know, for, for um, uh, kind of uniformity sake that you would probably want it to be McDonald's dot com slash franchises slash whichever one it is. Um, I don't know though. So a lot of times on the advertising front, you can um, uh, you, you can put whatever display URL you want. I guess the only question is about uh, like type in traffic. Would that be too tough for people? I don't know. I've never thought about it in depth. But I would based on my understanding of I think internet hierarchy and at least as it focuses on SEO, I'd probably have it as a uh, as a just a part of your overall site map, um, not as its own subdomain. But that's just off the cuff. Thank you, um, Charles. I apologize. I see that you've now used your phone, but it looks like you don't have an audio pin. Oh, wait a second. Now, Charles, you're self muted. No, I'm self muted. <laughs> There we go. Hello. Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, Eric, for answering my question. Um, I, I deal with that a, a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, I really don't know, you know, how to handle it or what to tell the clients. So um, I'm still working through that. But uh, great, great answer. No problem. One more question. Um, when you're at 
when you're advertising on Facebook, um, you know, just presenting a franchise opportunity. Um, what, since you, like you said, we take the users out of their environment, um, what content or what words should we use to, I guess, um, make that advertise, advertisement look more appealing to them? Um, what can we make to say, to, you know, to have them fill out that form and, and get that lead? Absolutely. So, uh, not to, to you know. So, we've certainly written about messaging quite a bit on the LGRC, and um, the, the answer is there's, there's lots of different things you can do. And I would I would encourage you to check out um, some of the writing that we have there because um, I, for me, so from a social media perspective, I like the idea of disruption. I like the idea of putting content and copy that is causing people to think a little bit differently than they may have been thinking at that moment. Um, I think that when you think about how people use social media, oftentimes I describe them as in zombie mode. Um, so especially if you're scrolling through something like Instagram, but even the Facebook news feed as well, like you're not in your most thoughtful self, right? You're just kind of looking and, and browsing and whatever. So the advertisements I think that are going to be the most effective are the ones that are going to kind of get you out of zombie mode. So if you look back at the reason I put the Salesforce advertisement here was, is your company ready for a CRM? Um, like, it's a really uh, savvy way to write it, write it up because it's like, well, I wasn't even thinking about that. And it doesn't say anything about why CRMs are going to change my business. Like, I probably see that all the time, whatever. It's like, is my company ready for a CRM? Well, I don't know if I've ever asked myself that question. So if nothing else, it causes, um, it causes me to think a little bit differently. So with franchisees, anything about, like, you know, are you ready for the challenge of being your own boss? Um, what type of franchisee would you be, or if you have a particular franchise, you know, what type of gym owner would you be? What type of um, food franchisee would you be? You know, something where you can kind of cause people to say, like, oh, like, whoa, that's different. That's a different way of thinking than I've ever done, or, or that's a different question than I've ever asked. Um, I like that messaging. Um, the onus gets pretty high once they get to your website to actually deliver on the disruption. So um, we do a lot here at Franchise Help with this matching quiz because we want people to kind of feel that you know that, that, that their experience there's actually something tactile with it. Um, I would you know the worst case scenario I would imagine is if you come up with a really clever disruptive ad you know what type of franchisee will you be and then you send them right to a contact form you know oh give me your phone number and I'll I'll give you the answer. Uh, so assuming that your website has the ability to kind of live up to that then um, I, I love the idea of disruption and something that's a little bit outside the box. Great. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. No problem. Eli, two more questions. Um, which form of marketing would you recommend for a franchise with a high initial investment, so say about 150000 Ooh. So... The higher you get, the more you're going to have to think about content marketing. So I think a lot of people are scared of content marketing because it's very difficult to measure. It's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a lot of, of uh, uh, rigmarole associated with it. So when we look at high, high liquid capital investments, what happens is you change the way people are thinking about it to more of competing against the S&P 500. So rather than being your own boss, a lot of the language like, look, if someone's going to invest a quarter million dollars, if someone's going to invest a half million dollars in a franchise, they're likely going to go through some sort of analysis in their brain of like, well, what else would I do with this money? And oftentimes we say, well, you could put it in the market if they're very savvy. So content around why your franchise is a great investment, I would imagine would be the type of thing that's going to work <laughs> incredibly well. Finding those people is hard. And don't get me wrong, like I, I think that you're, um, as you get higher and higher up in the liquid capital world, the internet becomes a more and more difficult place because you are looking for a smaller and smaller needle in the haystack. Um, but as you get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, I would think more about content marketing. Um, social media is going to be hard. Uh, very few people are um, on Instagram thinking about how they're going to invest their next $150,000. Uh, I would think that you know, SEO would kind of fall in the wake of content. You could do some SEM. Um, people don't really search things like expensive franchise or, or whatever. Uh, I don't, uh, you would have to be very 
clever about the search terms, and, and whoever's asking this question, you're going to know more about your franchise than, than I am. But um, I would imagine, uh, you know, if, if that kind of money, a, a really good content marketing campaign on LinkedIn would have a lot, a lot of potential. Um, but I, I would need to know more. Thank you. And then sort of a follow-up and another question is, where is the best place to get exposure for content marketing? Get exposure? So if exposure is defined by impressions, which, uh, you know, like how many different people can I get to actually look at this, um, networks like Taboola and Outbrain and those places, I mean, they can get you thousands and thousands and thousands of impressions at fairly economical rates. Um, we have experimented pretty in depth with trying to get that to work. I think for Taboola and Outbrain, that the difficult part ends up being, you know, hey, what are those actual audiences? Is it the right people? So if your content is super viral and you just need to get it in, the, in enough people such that they're going to forward it to the next person and, and, and kind of build on network effects, then I would say exposure via that. At the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you have something like LinkedIn. LinkedIn CPCs are very high. Um, sometimes we see as much as $5 a click on LinkedIn. Um, we, they, they know that they are a, a very, um, a very uh, valuable source for people and especially have a very good audience. So uh, if you have more specific targeting and you just need to find the people, then you can pay a pretty penny to get the exposure there. Um, but you can you can do you can do anything. Email is always the best for content marketing, assuming you have emails. Um, and, and I'm not going to take it for you know not going to take it as a given that you do. But um, people like the concept of being emailed um, a really cool piece of content. And if it has a good subject line and a good link to it, um, for those of you who will um, who end up subscribing to I hope to subscribe to the LGRC uh, with your emails, you'll see uh, we we do our best to kind of put relevant content in your inbox uh, once a week or twice a week because people want to read that. They want to deliver to them and ultimately they can read read good LGRC content frequently as opposed to, you know, it disrupting them when they're on LinkedIn or, or whatever it may be. Uh, so if you have the emails, I would say email and then depending on what end of the spectrum of whether you're just looking for impressions or looking for high quality, those are some options. Great, thank you. Any last minute questions? I think you really covered These are great questions, by the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really got you thinking. <laughs> Nothing else. No, I think that's everything. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, so much for your time. Eli, we especially appreciate all the education today. If there's anything else you'd like to speak to Eli about after the call, please do so using his email address. Feel free to reach out to myself if there's anything that you need from us here at IFPG. Number is 888-977-4374, extension 101. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Eli.